Welcome to my home in Margate. My name's Caro and I'm one of the founders of London-based biophilic design studio Roco. And I'm also the author of Root Nurture Grow, which is a propagation handbook for houseplants. It goes without saying that I love houseplants. And for those of us who don't have an outdoor space, they're such a great way to create a zen space in your home. So now that the propagation season has arrived, I'm gonna show you three of the simplest methods to multiply your house plants. And that's division, stem cuttings, and succulent leaf propagation. It's so much more rewarding using existing plants to grow new ones. And I love sharing plants with friends to save money and create an indoor garden that has a story. The first method I'm gonna show you is division. And this is where you split a plant into sections that you keep hold of leaf, stem, root in every section. And it's really good for plants that have become a bit overgrown or perhaps they've become a bit root bound. And it doesn't work for all house plants. You want to use plants that grow in clusters rather than from one central stem. Um, or plants that grow from rhizomes like ferns, the snake plant, ZZ plant. So if you look at your plant and you can see that it's sort of growing from multiple sections or se um, sort of clusters, you know it's a good technique for you. The plant I'm going to be dividing today is the very popular Monstera adansonii. Um, it's quite a new house plant and it's one that everyone wants to get, so it's a really good one to propagate and share with your friends. With any of these techniques, you want to make sure that the pots you're using have drainage holes. And that's really important for houseplants because if they sit in water in a sealed pot, you'll kind of inevitably end up getting root rot. So make sure you're using a pot with drainage holes. And I've just prepared my pot. I'm going to be dividing the plant, I think, just into two sections. So I've put a layer of compost at the bottom of the pot to start with. So here we go. So. Sometimes with a plant, especially if it's become a bit root bound, it can become a little bit stuck in the pot. So a good way to take it out is to just use your hand, sort of open your fingers and sort of support the stems as best you can. You want to hold on to as much compost as possible. And just gently put it on its side. You can give the pot a little squeeze and that helps sometimes just to release some of the roots. And then I'm just gonna very gently take the plant out like that. Okay. And really now it's kind of up to you if you're separating it into lots of sections, obviously you might wanna divide it slightly differently, but I'm gonna try and keep the fullness of the plant a little bit. So you're just gonna need a sharp knife. Um, I'm gonna make sure it's clean before you start. And it's really easy, you're just gonna basically it down the middle like this. There we go. And what you'll see is actually a plant like this, the Monstera, it is just growing in different sections, so it's normally really easy to um, split. And if you cut a few roots, don't worry about it, they'll um, they'll bounce back pretty quickly. So I've got my new pot, and all I'm gonna do is just place the plant. If, you, if, you're, if the roots are looking really kind of root bound and bit overrun you can sort of take away some of the roots just gently prise away any that look a little bit old so once it's in and you're happy with it it looks good to me I'm just gonna fill in the gaps with more compost so really simple just fill in around the edges and just keep going you don't want it to be too compact because you want to leave a little bit of aeration for the roots just enough so that the plant is in the pot and nice and sort of stable um, and then you're good to go. You've probably already recognised this plant. Uh, this is the Epiprenum aureum which is sometimes called golden pothos or devil's ivy and it's a really popular house plant because it grows very quickly, it looks really beautiful cascading over a bookshelf or a windowsill. And I'm going to show you how to take stem cuttings or softwood cuttings from this plant um, and it's a really good way to tame a plant that's become, you know, really overgrown or perhaps it's draped onto the floor and you just want to neaten it up. And actually by taking cuttings and pruning the plant, you'll encourage new growth and you'll make the original plant fuller and bushier. So it's kind of mutually beneficial to take cuttings from a plant like this. The rooting power in the stem is held in the node and you can identify nodes just by looking where a side shoot or a leaf is growing, like here. 
So this would be a node, this is a node, this is a node. So to take your cuttings, you want you want to cut just just below a node, about a centimetre below. And then you know you're holding on to all the rooting power. So I'm going to take a cutting here. And I might take another one here. And maybe one more here. And you can actually go all the way up the stem and take as many as you want. As long as you've got some side stems on there, that's fine. Some leaves. So I'm going to take one more. And then when you get to your last cut, you want to encourage the, the parent plant to, to send off side shoots. So you're going to cut again just above the node, because otherwise this bit of stem is just going to hang around and not do much. And you can chuck away this bit. With stem cuttings, you've got two options. You can either root them in compost, or if you haven't got the time or the materials, you can start them off in water. So just a small vase of water. And the only thing you want to watch out for with that is um, once the roots get sort of one or two centimetres long, you ideally don't want to let them get too long. They sort of, they become aquatic roots and they, they might not acclimatise to soil so well. So if you're planning on moving the plant into compost, as soon as you see roots forming, you want to move them on. I'm going to show you how to plant into compost today. So ideally you want to have prepared your new pots before you take the cuttings. Um, tropical plants tend to lose their moisture quite quickly, so you want to be able to move them into the pot as quickly as possible. So I've got my pot here of um, compost, it's nice and damp, and I'm going to use either um, just a finger or a pencil um, to make some holes in the compost. So I want to make another really lovely full plant. So rather than just putting one stem in a pot, I'm going to put multiple stems and then that will encourage the plant to be really nice and full right from the beginning. So I'm just going to make some holes in the compost. And then all you need to do is just place your cut stems a couple of centimetres down to the compost and then just pat the compost around just to fill in any gaps and make sure they're nice and secure. These long stalky bits above the node, you can trim down. They're not really going to do much and you can get rid of these bits. And you can, if the, if the plant starts to look a little bit wilted, you can just um, encase this in a plastic bag, um, same as with division, and that'll just help to boost the humidity um, and help it to acclimatise while it's rooting. And then just while it's rooting, you want to keep it somewhere. Um, you don't want it in too much direct light. Vines and tropical plants, they like to be have bright indirect light. So just a, a spot where it will be lovely and warm, um, a bit of light, but nothing too harsh. And you should, within a few months, start to see some new stems growing um, and you should start to see it come to life. And in a you know six months or so, you should start to see these stems growing nice and long. You can use this technique for bigger plants as well, things like really large Monstera, Drassiana, anything where the plant has a node on the stem, you can use this technique. You'll just need bigger pots and more compost. The final method I'm going to show you is succulent leaf propagation. And succulents are amazing because they've adapted to multiply with almost no help at all. So each one of these juicy leaves has enough hormones to grow into a new plant. And there are hundreds of succulents to find out there. Um, ones from the Crassula, Calancho, Ripsalis, Echeveria, Genera, they will all work with this method. Um, the most important thing to start with is that you want to water the plant a few days before you start. And that's to make sure that the leaves are as hydrated as possible because they're gonna be relying on the moisture that they store in order to root. And that might take anywhere up to a couple of months. So water beforehand and then you can start propagating. So all you really need is a shallow tray like this one and some really well draining compost. Because succulents have such small root systems, you don't need the tray to be deep, it can just be as shallow as this. To remove a leaf, you're just going to pinch it between your thumb and index finger and you're just going to really gently pinch it and twist it back and forth, up and down until it comes loose and you really want to try and take it off as close as possible to the stem because the rooting power of the leaf is right at the at the tip of it where it touches the stem so just do it really gently 
So try to select leaves that are fairly young. You don't want to use the really old leaves that are at the bottom of the stem. Um, so those that are a bit younger will have a bit more rooting power. And any that break off or don't come away cleanly, you can just, you can just dispose of those. Rather than plant these straight away, we're going to leave them somewhere out of direct light and that's so that the cut ends can callus over and that will stop any bacteria from getting into the plant. After three or so days, you'll see that this cut end has calloused over and has formed a sort of hard edge and then you know they're ready. So once they've calloused over, we're just going to use a finger or a little tool just to make little holes in the compost like this. And you're just going to gently place them into the compost. They only need to be in far enough that they can sort of be supported upright like that. I've taken quite a lot of leaves because inevitably some aren't going to grow and be healthy. So take more than you think you need. And the best thing to do with these to water them is to just gently moisten the compost like this. And only when this compost dries out do you want to water it again. So you don't want it to be too soggy. The last thing you want is soggy roots at this point. So just keep this compost nice and damp, never wet. And you want to keep this somewhere nice and warm, not too bright, plenty of light but not direct sunlight. And after a few months you should start to notice a little tiny rosette of leaves that will start to grow. And maybe after three or four months, once you can really start to see some growth, you can use a spoon or a little shovel like this, and you can transplant them from the tray into their own individual pots. Thanks for joining me. I hope you have fun exploring virtual Chelsea and filling your home with even more green. And if you'd like to find out more about houseplant propagation, check out our book, Root Nurture Grow, or you can follow us on Instagram at studio.roco.